<laughs> that's, a, that's so great. I'm not used to that. I'm going to pause from now on. Um, uh, welcome to our service, Polly Eucharist. Uh, we start on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. <coughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, now and forever. Please join. Amen. Amen. Please join me in saying the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you the secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. of Jesus in the River Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant Amen. that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant that they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for God's word. reading from the book of Isaiah. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you into righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 29, found in your insert. Let us read it responsibly by half verse. 
Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is on my waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is the voice of thunder. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Aaron like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people blessing and peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Lord, we 
thank you for this opportunity to come before you to study your word, to be together as a community, and to seek unity with you in our faith. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to the Epiphany season where many things are revealed. <laughs> The first bishop that I served under as a priest uh, often said, and he said it as much as I say to you uh, that whole stuff about righteousness, uh, was that Isaiah was Jesus' spiritual superhero. Uh, and Jesus does quote uh, the writers of Isaiah often enough to bear witness to that claim being true. Uh, possibly another way to think about that is that the highly relational Jesus as the Word of God considered those texts as coming so close to God's intention for humanity that he highlighted them by using them often for God's people as they studied scripture and as they listened to him speak. Just sort of a bringing together of everything in that way. It's probably a yes and kind of response to that question, you know, I often try to think about, well, you know, where, where does this come from? But whatever the reason, Jesus most certainly leads all of us into a life that God's soul can delight in. I love that phrase in the first verse of uh, Isaiah 42. Um, Epiphany, as I just said, is the season of revealing. And what, we are, what is revealed to us is God's presence, Emmanuel, in the world to everyone, not just the shepherds and the angels and uh, Mary and Joseph and the wise men, but all people begin to recognize and see Christ in the world. And the lectionary in all three years, on the first Sunday of Epiphany, um, after the Epiphany, reveals something about Christ's mission through what are called servant songs from Isaiah. And each one, like this poem from uh, chapter 42, make clear what human traits it is that God delights in. Compassion, humility, seeking justice for all, inclusivity, and paramount <coughs> faith in God. That one thing. And through his ministry, beginning with his baptism, Jesus shows us the way to seek justice and compassion toward one another when the world deals us its crushing blows. As Isaiah put it, a bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. In other words, God and God's servants will not kick you when you are down. They will lift you up instead. Think of the stories that you know about Jesus. He spent his ministry healing bruised and diminished souls of individuals and families. And whether those people were physically wounded or crushed by unbalanced societal structures, he gave them hope as well as new life. And he began doing so right at the very beginning of his ministry through his baptism. So you may not think, other than that he was baptized when he didn't need to, that his baptism was an act of compassion and mercy and justice, but it was. Often on this Sunday, uh, what you might hear would be a sermon about our own baptisms, because the baptism of the Lord is kind of traditionally, throughout the history of the church, a good day to get baptized. And there would be people you know, being baptized, and so we would hear about that. But we want to we want to focus on Jesus' baptism. Why on earth? Why on earth did he do that? We're reminded through our own baptism that that is where we honor our adoption into God's family through Jesus' inclusive grace. And that grace begins with him stepping into the water and his conversation with John. Because when John pushes back against his request to be baptized, Jesus responds that for them to do this act together, 
So Jesus doesn't do it alone, does he? John has to baptize him. That is a way for the two of them to fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill and honor God through their faith, that this is what is the right and good thing to do. And as you remember, righteousness is all about faith in God's desire to have a relationship with God's creation, us. To loosely quote Genesis, it's not that loose, but kind of, Abraham had faith in God, so God considered him a righteous man. It is not. Abraham did everything perfectly and lived a perfect <laughs> life, so God considered him righteous. Not that. It's Abraham had faith in God. Beautiful, just beautiful. It just makes me emotional when I think about it. For Jesus, who was already righteous, already free of sin, his baptism was done in solidarity with those who were attempting to leave their worldly pride and isolation from God behind. And for him, that was an important way for him to enter into his ministry, stepping out on the correct foot which is, I am with you, Emmanuel, God with us. When Jesus acts, everything he does, every word he says, every movement he makes, I'll be watching you. No, no it's not a police song. <laughs> um, when Jesus acts, it seems that a window opens between heaven and earth. Not a creepy stalker guy. Um, a window opens between heaven and earth, and that window opens so clearly as he rose up out of the water because God spoke to everyone in attendance that day and then descended as the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove also to show solidarity with the Son and with humankind in the path that Jesus had chosen to begin his ministry in with God, with people, it's just amazing, every single little thing about it. God emphasized Isaiah's original calling to Israel and Jesus as promised through his ministry and expanded it so that it encompassed both the restoration of Israel and the salvation of every nation on earth, which we hear in that passage from Isaiah. Rather than looking at failures, i.e., bruising the reed, stepping on us, kicking us when us down, telling us that we're just not good enough and God's going to have to punish us in some way, or adjusting the call to humankind to be in relationship with him uh, downwards to meet dis diminished expectations. God meets us where we are, believes in us so fully that he came in human form to Give us the nudge in a loving, compassionate way. God says to the beloved son, I will give you as a light to the nations so that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. When he entered fully into his ministry, Jesus continued to meet everyone where they were, healed them body and soul, and invited them to be someone more than they or their families or the society around them thought that they could be. Whether a person was beset by personal demons or living a culturally valued but out of touch life, he helped them see God's goodness within themselves, God's holiness and God's belief in them that they could be that soul that entered this earth as love. And then those people that he encountered changed their world so drastically that we still celebrate it today. And if we have that... <clears throat> even those things that seem unimaginably impossible are possible because we can do it together when we follow him. We can change to love ourselves and to love others. And we can change our world, which so many people say is impossible, too hard, 
It's just too much. It's too damaged. It's too broken. It's not. I mean, look what he dealt with. Oh, my goodness. Piece of cake for us. Thus says the Lord God, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Please join me in affirming your faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. On page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of the only King of the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, beginning now from then, by the power of the Holy Spirit, beginning in harmony to the Lord of the Lord, and with the face of the Amen. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his trial. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose to him, in accordance with his riches. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand. He will come out again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world of the town. Amen. The prayers of the people will follow form three on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer and include those things in your bulletin handout. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. We pray for the Diocese of Europe, the Church of the Provident, Myanmar, and the Church of the Epiphany in Newton. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, Bishop Griselda of Cuba, Aaron, our priest, Oscar Rosso, diocesan missioner for Latino ministries, Robert, our musician, and all bishops and other ministers. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Bring justice and peace on the earth. We pray for Joe, our president, Roy, our governor, and Steve, our mayor. We pray for those in our community who are serving in the military, especially for Michael, Ian, Philip, Grayson, Gavin, Jared, Jade, Nicholas, Perry, Chuck, and Philip. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. For our works we find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for the sick, the friendless, and the needy, that they may experience your healing presence, especially Melchor Tomas, Jim Crawley, George Valentine and the Valentine family, Jim and Connie Bergen, Randy Honduras, Ann Allen, Kathleen Buchanan, Margot Brown Hampton, Sam Beckerson, Nancy Long, Altoro Cortez, Linda Aldenrink, 
Frankie and Angie Milliken, Hal Gaiman and Fred and Rose Pinkle, and Margaret Hale. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We also come to share your heavenly kingdom. We pray for all those that have died, especially Ken Ledbetter and Susan Buffet. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer thanksgivings for the birthday of me, Warren Rockwell. <laughs> Happy birthday. Are there anniversaries to name? Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us now confess our sins to God and our neighbor. Amen. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned sin against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet your neighbors in a sign of peace. So most of the uh, things that you need to know are on your, what did I do with that thing? So there's a thing that I have that you need to know, and I'll print it out at home, and it's pretty. Aww. <laughs> um, I can't believe me. Okay. Maybe it's over here. Um, uh, well, for one thing is that uh, our coffee hour is sponsored today by the Daughters of the King. Uh, so I'm sure that they have done a feast worthy of, of you going through the rain down there. So please do uh, uh, and join them for the uh, coffee hour. 
And the other thing is that I didn't get it in uh, to the newsletter on time, but this coming Saturday, uh, uh, Mount Zion AME always has a Martin Luther King Jr. Day speaker and breakfast. Uh, and prayers, and that will be at this year because all the churches are kind of joining together to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. and they organize it. Uh, it will be at First Baptist Church at 9 a.m. on Saturday. And you're all invited to come to that. I, I hope that I see some of you there. Uh, it should be wonderful. They've got a speaker coming <laughs> whose name is <laughs> somewhere not available to me even though I printed it out. Um, and so please do, um, please do come to that. It is Saturday at 9, and I will send an email reminder uh, tomorrow or the next day so that you have it with the, with the poster that I have misplaced uh, included in that. Um, are there other announcements for the good of the community, Amanda? Yeah, it's in your insert, but because it's something that I do. It affects her. It affects me tremendously. Yeah. Um, if you are in charge of a committee or something that pertains to the welfare of St. John's, I need to have your report for the annual booklet by January 19th. She Her is generous. Mm -hmm. Most of the yeah. church administrators I have known have like required it by you know, two weeks before. So. Oh, no, you're G going to email it to me so I don't have to type it. Right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Still generous. Uh, so, yes, our annual meeting is on the 22nd. Please uh, take a look at that and, and uh, be sure to see it. So, uh, Oh, and I also have an announcement. Go ahead. And um, next Sunday after church, our lovely musician Mike, We'll be playing a gig at the Spillway for their brunch. And not only is the music good, but the food is delicious. And we would, if you would like to attend, please let me know so we can get a table reserved for everybody. Yeah. And you can just show up, but if we all want to sit together and really be a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> <in there. laughs> And make Mike as nervous as possible. No, I don't think that is possible. Um, Mike, are you uh, the singer there, you think? Yeah. Oh, great. Yay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that will be fun. Uh, the, uh, uh, possibly not as exciting and does not include food. Um, but I will be, again, offering uh, the Sacred Ground um, uh, class. It is all Zoom. Uh, it will be, again, on January uh 23rd, or that Monday, uh, that Monday, January 23rd at 7 p.m. at night because I've got people in Mountain Time uh, and Central Time that are going to be joining us for that. It is an 11-week class. Uh, it is amazing, and I invite anyone who would like to be part of that class uh, to uh, talk to me or email me for, um, to register. I only take 12 people in that class, and I have got seven already registered. So if you would like to be part of it um, and meet people from all over the country, um, please see me. All right, anything else? Oh, the prayer for one. And one more announcement. Yes, just real quick. Um, we saw that our annual meeting is on January 22nd, which means the vestry needs to be prayerfully considering our budget, and to do that, we need pledges to be in so that we can meaningfully take a look at what we're able to do with our funds. So if you haven't had a chance to submit your pledge card, would you think about doing that just as soon as possible? Thank okay. you so much. And, that, and those pledge cards include time and talent. Yes. Uh, because we're, we're going to work on a, a theme, uh, if you've got an idea. So, um, Warren. Happy birthday. Oh, yes, more, more things. Where are these cards? You didn't get one either? Oh, okay. For a long time, they were in the back of the church. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, I will. Make sure you have them. You have to come down to the hour. Come down to the hour. And you will get And you get a free card. And you get a free card. We're going to come <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Excellent. All right. 
Uh, Warren, is it today? No. Right. What day is it? Friday? Friday. Friday. On oh. Friday, I will be early uh, eligible for early Social Security The Christmas music, of course. Yeah. Uh, walk in love as Christ has loved us, as a fragrant offering to God.
in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of blood, a body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with John and all your saints, we may enter into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass before us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hmm. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Take them in remembrance that Christ came because God loves you, sees you as worthy, and invites you to this table. A reminder that this is God's table, not an Episcopal table, and all are welcome to receive at God's table. Mm -hmm.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with an anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you this day and go with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.